So having gotten the navigation bar to a state where we're comfortable with it, it's time to move on to this little slider. Now we spoke about how we want to have, for example, an image of the house. On the right side we want uh, the, the title of the house to be the address, to have some information about the house, as well as a, com uh, a call to action to look at the listing in its full page of view. Before we really start coding and start making stuff happen, let's try and better understand how the actual carousel works from an HTML point of view. There are two ways to do this. You can either go into Sublime Text and kind of interpret the code as you're going along. So for example, uh, here is the container for the entire carousel. Let's see what happens when we um, collapse that. Well, it pretty much collapsed most of that code. And here's the programmer indicating to us that this is the end of the carousel. Um, there's some interesting components to the carousel. There's some indicators, not sure what that means. There's a carousel inner class and then some controls. So maybe those controls probably mean uh, the left and the right controls, and then the inner part probably has the contents. In fact, maybe if I expand this, okay, well, we see this conception of an item called item, and if I collapse that, yeah, oh, yeah, that would confirm because there's a number of different items. Okay, cool. So let's, what, let's see, oh, and maybe the class active indicates that this is the item that's going to show up on the page and probably what the JavaScript does is it kind of moves active between each of these classes to show one item at a time. So let's see what's the contents of a single item. Okay, so we have our image. Interesting, so maybe this is the image that, um, that really consumes this whole page. Inside that is a container, uh, so that centers some sort of content. Uh-huh, interesting. Cool. And then, what else do we have? We have the headline. So what happens if I edit this? Say, hello world. Okay, so if I save that and refresh the page, neat. So that's where I'm editing the contents. Now, that was the HTML way of doing it. And if you're an expert, maybe that's easy. A more visual way of doing it is by inspecting the individual elements. This is a little bit more difficult in that the slider might be changing real time as things are happening. Right? So right again, maybe I had it over some sort of data source, but because the slider changed, it's not showing that actively right now, and so it won't be highlighted on the page. Let's see that again. See, now it's highlighted, but in just a moment, that highlight's going to disappear. Um, but I was really confused about what the carousel indicators were. So what happens if I highlight over that? Aha! Uh -huh. So what happens is, for each of my items, carousel indicators are generated to indicate what part of the slider, what item I'm on. And maybe if I click on them, right, as is typical for these types of features, it actually goes directly to that slide. So it would seem that the first thing that I want to do is I actually want to kind of set up, I, I probably want to make things a little bit easier myself. Maybe I want to work with one item at first, edit that item, and then copy and paste that as a, a for, for my different slides. Because from what I understand, the way the slider works is it has these three different items, and then it pushes one and makes the other one active. Then it pushes the other one and it makes the other one active. Right, cool. And you can actually see the classes change dynamically in developer tools as the JavaScript applies those styles. Really neat stuff. Really interesting stuff going on. So, but we only want one to work at the time. So let's, let's delete these guys. Let's see what happens if we only have one. Okay, it's going to keep it active and it's going to show it up on the page. So working with this, I mean, from what I understand, carousel inner is just a big block. It would be just like any HTML page. And then within it, you have this container concept of a container, and then this carousel caption. And to it are applied some styles uh, that make it work. Good stuff. But I want to edit this kind of stuff. Let's see what happens if I... Uh, create my own content in the container. I don't want a carousel caption, so I put H1 217 Sarnia Road. Save. It's going to put it over here. It's going to do some really wonky stuff. Let's see what that means. Cool. For whatever reason, some of that text is being blocked out. What happens if I apply a Z index of 10? Doesn't really affect it. Interesting stuff. What happens if I delete this HTML? Interesting. So what happened was, 
what I did was I first went into my carousel, went into the inner part. I noticed that this was being deleted. And I kind of thought, okay, well, there must be something blocking it or maybe some CSS is constraining it. So starting with the CSS hypothesis, I first tried to see, okay, well, maybe I need to push, push it to the front of the page more. And that's done with the zint index uh, attribute. Didn't seem to work. But I also had this image, and the way this plugin might work might be really confusing for me. So I can actually delete HTML components, HTML tags in real time with inspect element, and I can do that by deleting the node. And when I did that, then my text showed. So what I want to do is I want to delete that in my actual HTML page. Neat stuff. So if I refresh, now, now things are looking really interesting. Uh, probably beside, I probably should make that text white. Now, before I start going willy-nilly and applying rules to the header, um, maybe a bunch of my other text is going to be white in there as well. So let's actually put this into the, um, let's put this into a class. Let's call this um, slide content, and that's going to have the header, and it'll probably have some other information there, like for example, the description of the house, as well as the uh, the call to action. So I want to add that around the h1 tag, save it, and then I want to open my CSS and make the contents of that white. So once that's like content, color is white. Cool. And now it's white. I still have three indicators. I should probably fix that as well. So it looks like those things aren't automatically created. And the interesting stuff is it actually goes to data slide one, data slide two. All right, let's uh, let's actually save the code for this one, in case I forget that I might have to remove class active. It would seem like this is the stuff that I copy over when I have subsequent slides. So I'll delete that, save that for later, commenting it out as if I, as if I'm creating information for myself, not for the actual web page, because text between this tag and this tag is completely ignored by the browser. So saving that, now I have one indicator and probably the active class makes it uh, white. My next job is to continue with my text. So let's say we have utilities included and uh, four rooms. <coughs> Excuse me. Interesting stuff probably want to make that bigger so we'll do that a little bit later now let's also include the price uh, $600 per month I think usually actually uh, yeah $600 per month per, per user cool so maybe we want to make that text a little bit bigger let's go to let's apply that let's apply uh, that style to the P tag within the slide content div so to the p tag within the slide contactive and let's make the font size mm, 20 pixels let's see what happens okay looks a little bit better looks a little bit better now what's the spacing maybe i don't want the spacing uh... okay so the margin is being applied so the spacing here is bottom top margin bottom so maybe, I, well, well, let's see specifically. Yeah, so there's a margin applied at the bottom because we can see it by the orange and it's being applied by bootstrap. So what happens if I make that margin bottom zero pixels? Cool, it's removed. That looks pretty kosher to me. I think the last thing that I'm looking for is a call to action. Uh, and that's created using a button. I seem to have forgotten how to create buttons in bootstrap. So if I go to the components page, Mm, it's not here. It doesn't seem to be on the right. There's some other stuff like button groups and button drop downs. So maybe if I go into the CSS, aha, uh -huh, here are the buttons. And here I can see the different button types, etc. Now, the button element in Bootstrap is a little bit more complex. Um, it's actually not supported by all browsers. So what you could do is you could create an A tag, right? It's a link, and then you can apply these classes to make the to make the link look like a button. And that's actually what I'm going to do. So I'm going to go to A, uh, href, right? And then we, we're not linking it to anything yet. Button. So button default seems to be this white one. Button primary is the blue one. Success and so forth. 
So I'm going to call it button primary. And let's call it to, uh, let's say, uh, view listing. Close that A tag. See where I'm at. Whoops. Too many tabs. And interesting. So maybe I want to push that up a little bit. Let's, uh, let's, let's push that up a little bit. So applying this style to the A tag, let's add a margin top of 20 pixels or 10 pixels. Perfect. Interesting stuff. Interesting stuff. So now, hmm, the other couple, there are two things missing still. I am missing, well, first of all, this isn't centered at all. Uh, and the other thing is I know I had an image beside it. So I'm actually going to first start with uh, putting an image beside this content. Now, things get a little bit murky here. So you might have the intuition saying, like, oh, cool, I can start just going willy-nilly. So for example, I can apply, say, class slide image and start customizing. Like, for example, I can apply margins to here, add margins to here, you know, go into Bootstrap and, you know, maybe pull this content to the right, pull this content to the left, kind of doing, again, things in a very hacky way. But returning to our kind of pearls of wisdom, the first thing we want to see, well, does, has Bootstrap done it? And has Bootstrap done it better? And um, in this instance, Bootstrap has some information for us to work with, namely in the grid system. So what, good, what, what the grid will do is we can actually organize our content. For example, uh, let me actually just close some of these guys. To organize our content so that given that we have this space to work in, this whole gray space, we can make sure that some content only fills up this half and some other content fills up only this half, right? And in this case, we create what's called a two-column grid. So let's look at the syntax here. Um, they have some plot class prefixes, but definitely ev the way that the Bootstrap grid system works is that it basically tries to arrange your, col uh, your information around 12 columns. So whenever you apply a grid within, a, within an element, you have 12 possible columns and combinations of columns to work with. And whatever combinations of columns you have, the total amount has to add up to 12. So if I wanted to make a two-column grid, what I'd actually be creating is a, is a column spanning the width of six columns on one side and another column spanning the width of six columns on the other side. So let's see that in terms of syntax. Uh, I want to first create a row because it's like a row of content and that's typically how we prefix our columns and then within that I want to create a column so I start with col we do a dash lg to say that um, this is all about different form factors so this is might be very technical and if you can't really wrap your head around this it really doesn't matter but the LG part basically says on large screen devices have this span six columns. And you can customize this. So for example, maybe on a smaller device you only want it to span three columns. In any case, I'm also going to create another column, LG6. Cool. So I created this row with two columns. Let's add our kind of bidness. Let's add the image in one column. Save that bad boy there. Let's also add this slide content here and save that over there. We want to make sure the indentation is consistent. So let's see how this plays out. Hopefully it works. Cool. Isn't that neat? Now it's all on the uh, left side. This is empty, obviously. Um, and if I kind of rummage through this, it's actually... Uh, nope, that's the control. It's actually properly placed. So here's the row. And then I have my uh, Guten stuff right here. Cool LG6. Cool beans. So now let's kind of find ourselves an adequate image. Let's say uh, Yanukovych Mansion. So if you guys are keeping up with the times, a bunch, uh, bunch of ruckus happened in Ukraine and they got rid of the president. And I actually went over to his house and checked out like what kind of luxury someone that uh, corrupt lives in. So here's his beautiful, horrid-looking mansion that we will use as an example for our listing. I'm going to add it as a house.jpg file. And let's see what happens if we add it into our 
uh, image slash, oh, yep, image slash house dot JPEG. Now there's other attributes that you want to add. For example, you want to add an alternative as in uh, what kind of text would show if we can't load this image. So that's for example for screen readers. And, of, of course, we have this shenanigans again where uh, uh, the house, because what happens when you load an image is it loads it to the full size. Um, it actually uh, spans more than what's, what it's probably required to be in. So the one way to fix that is to wrap it in a thumbnail tag. And the thumbnail uh, class, or not a thumbnail tag, a thumbnail class, uh, what that also does is it adds a nice little border. So let's see if that fixes it. Yep, cool beans. And now the the actual house will uh, will will fit to the width of whatever it's being wrapped in. So to kind of show that more visually, here's my carousel within within the items of the carousel. And then I have my active item. I have the container. So now the container constricts the information to this part of the page, to the center part of the page. And then I have my row. I have my two columns. And because that image is wrapped in a thumbnail in a thumbnail class, it can only be stretched to the width of a uh, to the width of the column within the container. So there's some oops, there's some spacing issues here. Both these guys are touching too far up. So I think what I'd want to do is I'd want to push the row down. I don't want to push the individual elements because I know that the first thing I want to do is I want to actually um, push down the overall elements to some degree. So I'd probably want to push down the row. Let's wrap it in a uh, slide wrapper class. So this is something that's going to wrap around the contents of an individual slide. And we're actually going to push the slide wrapper down uh, by a certain percentage amount. And we're going to use percentages so that it scales across devices. So if I do a slide, a margin top of 10%, let's see what happens. We're going to kind of have to eyeball this because uh, Instructor Archer doesn't really know better than that. 10% seems to be too big. So if I do that, um, I think we're looking for 6%. Close enough. Seems to be Guten. So if I kind of mess around with this. Uh, now what, what happens interestingly is when the image gets... When, the, when it gets small enough, because the, the slider is a fixed width, um, what happens to the columns is it will actually collapse so that it takes up a certain row, but it looks like on a small device it's working pretty well. And uh, there's more to talk about how to make this guy work for smaller devices, lots of work to do for that, but none that we can actually go into uh, today in this detail. So the other thing that we want to do is maybe push the slide content to be mm, maybe 2%. See what happens there. Kind of center this guy. Nope, doesn't want to do it. Let's see what happens with inspect element. Okay, we have slide content. Oh, maybe 2% is not big enough. Maybe it's looking for 5%. Maybe 25%. 25% is not big enough. 15%. Let's do 14%. I'm comfortable with 14%. So let's do margin top. 14%. Cool. And so I've got pretty, pretty, pretty done picture. In fact, I think I'm almost done with the carousel. Let's kind of take a step back and reflect on what we've done so far. We started off with this thing that basically was imposed on us. And our natural reflections say, oh my goodness, there's no way I can actually mess with this. But if you kind of break it down into its components, inspect how the programmer designed it, and then see where you can fit in and add your own custom HTML, then you can start making some interesting modification. If you start throwing in what Bootstrap has available for you, it actually becomes really, really easy. And hopefully my introduction through this video uh, can help alleviate that. The last kind of cool thing to do is we actually want to get rid of this bland, yucky, uh, yucky gray background. I actually want to add some kind of uh, texture to really make this pop. So if I look up a resource called CSS Backgrounds, uh, Let's do texture backgrounds. Texture background. I'm looking for this website called Subtle Patterns. And what Subtle Patterns does is it has all of these different files that will give you these various patterns that you can apply uh, within your website. So maybe if I want to apply like a nice like carbon fiber or something, 
I can have that going. So let's what? What do you want to do? We want to do black felt. I can't really see it on my screen. Uh, let's not do the preview anymore. Let's keep going. Let's go to page three. I promise that we won't go any more than page. Let's do tweed. Let's go with a tweed background. So I download this file. I get a zip file. Okay, that's kind of interesting. Let's copy it over temporarily to our project folder. Extract it. What's gonna, what are we going to get? We get a folder called tweed. And with tweed, we get this file called tweed.png. So let's copy that over to our images. Save that here. Delete these guys. Neat. Now I want to apply this tweed uh, texture as a background to my gray. Cool, 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 cool. So what would I have to apply it to? Well, I'd probably have to apply it to wherever uh, the gray is, right? Because that's where the gray is actually happening. So if I look here, if I can find it, maybe where the gray is being applied to, I think we can probably get away with putting it in the dot carousel element. Let's see what happens if I, well, let's go to the CSS, apply our custom CSS here, let's do it closer to the top because that seems to be where we're going to be overriding all of our elements. If I apply a background image, um, I want to go up one folder, so I do dot dot and a slash to indicate that this is a folder. Then I want to go into the image folder and use tweed.png for the image. And then background, repeat, repeat. And that way it will repeat both on the x-axis and the y-axis. See what happens? Nada. That's okay. Maybe there's a way to make it work. Can I find it? It can. So it's probably somewhere on the inner. Yep, it's on the individual items. So if I look here, aha! So maybe the fast way of fixing this is actually to make sure there's no uh, background color on the individual, individual items. But probably what I want to do is I actually just want to apply this, to, this not to the carousel, but to the carousel items. So if I refresh, now we've got our tweet going. So this is pretty interesting. Now it looks a little bit more professional. So having successfully modified the carousel, what I'd want to do is I want to add a couple of more slides. And this is really just a cut and paste job. So I know that I'd want to have to add another item within the inner carousel inner and I want to remove the active to make sure that it's not currently showing. Let's add another house so you know let's look at the White House you know be a little bit punny so to speak although I think the house is the White House is an actual place where the president lives. Um, let's go for this guy and save our image White House let's do White House JPG make sure all your stuff's lowercase to keep it keep it safe and White House, and let's call this, you know, 630 Richmond. Probably the uh, rent would be a little bit, a little bit cheaper. You know, I think Yanukovych probably lives in a much more. Uh, actually, it's probably a little bit more expensive. You know, in Ukraine, rent's a little bit cheaper. Um, uh, utilities are not included because the Americans are always trying to profit off of us. And that house probably has a couple more rooms. Let's have eight rooms. Cool. Now, though I've added it in the uh, inner part of the carousel, I also have <coughs> um, our indicators to work at. So I kind of commented th this off, and this might actually be really useful now. Let's see if this makes it work. If I refresh, I have my two indicators. If I click the arrows, bam, White House. Now, what we could probably do, since this is getting a little bit too big, is we could actually constrain the width of this image so that it's not always too big. So if I go up here and I have my dot slide image, I can probably have it at a height of mm, 400 pixels. Let's keep it at a constant height. Let's make it actually a maximum height. It can get smaller than that, but it won't want it to be any bigger than that. And so that way now, you know, the image adjusts. Actually, let's double check that because it doesn't seem to have worked. The slide image is a max height of 400. 
it seems to be that maybe 400 is not enough. It needs to be a little bit smaller than that. Let's make it 250. Okay. That doesn't seem to be uh, playing anything. Okay, let's try height. So what we want to do, yo man, mm, let's actually say dot slide image uh, dot dot thumbnail dot image. Oh, image. Let me say max height. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's investigate this a little bit. Yeah, the same issue there. And maybe I want this to float right. Okay, it's quite interesting. So maybe I want to definitely constrain. Cool. So we still have this problem where some images are too fat. Okay. 